Good morning, everybody. Once again, good morning. Um, if you're new here, uh, come hang out. I do things a little uh, unorthodox. No big fancy bells and whistles, but I try to do the best I can. Thank you for the new people that come in and got me over a thousand subs. Thank you for the old people that have been riding with me for a long time. I truly appreciate it. Uh, I've been under the weather a little bit, but the show must go on. I'm cutting down on cigarettes, and I think I'm jonesing from nicotine withdrawal. So I'm going to have to take a couple puffs so I can get through that, you know. Hey, Michael K. So i got to take a couple puffs. I'm, I'm going to play a video, Mike, um, a reaction to the video that uh, I said before, you know. Hey, Evanesh. A video I played, but for all the new people that come in, I'm going to just play uh, uh, the video like this, and then there's something that Mike Francis says. Uh, the El Bizarro. So it'll just give all the new... Because I I wanna I wanna pioneer new land, but I also wanna give somebody uh, a historical thing on what I've done in the past. So uh, it's a good excuse to do a good video or do another video. It's your opinion whether it's good or not. But uh, thank you everybody, and thank you once again for the NYC Crime Spot and that whole community. And I consider him part of my community because that guy reached out when he didn't have to. So thank you, Brett. Love always, buddy. So I'm going to play. This was a good, this was, I'm going to just play my old video. This is a reaction to my old uh, video, okay? I'm Josen, Jonesen, Evanesh. All right. Okay. Here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Yeah, right. Is the truth, sir? Happy New Year. Here we uh, go. If you're new, just showing up, and I haven't said it, Happy New Year to the new ones the new people and thank you for coming in here and uh you guys know i don't have fancy technology so hang in there with me this is a good video hang in there all right don't get peed off, don't get pee off at me you know just because everybody's so used to the coddle and conveniences some people rough it like me all right <laughs> i really do appreciate your support mike francis i think he's becoming a stand-up comic it's hilarious. He says, oh my, I got the thing here. My buddy sent it to me. He's so condescending to his people. How come he's always saying, now listen. What does he think? People are imbeciles. They're watching you, Mike. They're watching you. Hey, Carmela. Okay, here's, here's our good friend. Here's the megalomaniac. There's our megalomaniac, folks. Are you ready? Please pay attention now. Am I wait, 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 wait. Please pay attention now. Am I full? Please pay attention now. Am I full? What the hell's going Please on? Please pay attention now. Right out of the gate. Right out of the gate. Please pay attention now. Yeah, I remember the unknown comic from the Gong Show. Mm. Right out of the gate, here's Mike Francis, my former life. What do you mean your former life? This guy's so scripted. Please pay attention now in my former life. You, 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 you were an accountant in the mob. Don't, don't make it sound like some covert uh, uh, FBI thing. In, now listen, now in my... Okay, now let's continue, my good people. People would say, you know, are you afraid of Roy DeMeo? Are you afraid of Sammy Gravano? Are you afraid of these guys? What did I have to fear? I'm a made guy. If Sammy was mad at me, or if Roy DeMeo was mad at me, we're not going in the ring to fight, okay? We're not going to go and have a duel in the middle of the street. If somebody... What do I have to fear, he says. Hey, Mike Amari, Carmella. He says, Roy the Mayo, you weren't af you didn't you weren't afraid of Roy the Mayo? He says, Well, we're not gonna go in a ring and fight. No, he's gonna chop you up into pieces. That's what he's gonna do. 
and he's telling the viewers, now listen, um, I yeah, and I have nothing to follow. Made men got everybody that got killed was mostly made men. All right, let's continue. So not only does he want to portray being a mafia boss, he also wants to portray that he never feared anything. Uh, He never feared anything. So uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, he's wrong on both counts. So what is it with with, with him? And let's continue. Are stupid. He communicates to the viewers like they're nine years old, and he's and he's insulting people's intelligence. You could fear, uh, um, there's being careful if you're in the mob. There's being careful about things because you're being careful because you fear getting getting hit. This guy's just the golden boy. This guy is the best. He's the best. He gets an order to kill another guy in that life. You're not going to know about it. You're not going to telegraph it. You know, you got to understand something. Made guys don't fear one another. You might fear what? the boss because he's got the power of life and what? Life over you. But anybody else from another crew, another family, you're not in fear of these people because you don't have to be. Really? Please pay attention now. Please pay attention now. You hear this guy? You hear this guy? You... Now he brings up all the like. He he brings up he brings up he brings up all the known guys. He brings up like Sammy the Bull, the publicized guy. Hey Francis, we're gonna continue on with this. I just want to check in with you guys, but he says, "What do I have to fear?" Well, of course, he wasn't roaming the streets and everything. And he was in an office, probably a fancy Manhattan office somewhere. So maybe he didn't uh, exhibit or demonstrate some of the traditional fears of being in the trenches. But anybody anywhere was had a level of fear. If you have to be careful and be aware, it's fear driven, psychologically speaking. It's fear driven. So, uh, how much of this perfect mobster can can this? How much? Uh, I don't know. It's then he brings up Roy DeMeo's name. You know the butcher, uh, the most. He's so good in mob tubes, in mob tube, in mob talk. He knows that Roy DeMeo represents probably the definition of a, the most psychotic killer out there on planet earth. So Mike in his good thinking is like, I'll throw his name in. Like, I don't even fear Roy the male. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. Hey Francis, how you doing? He, he's going, what do I have to fear? Well, what do you mean? You know, Hey, Mr. Breeder. Good morning, Mike and Chris Breeder. How could you just say, well, how come, Mike, you stayed in a hole for the most part in New York with security all over the place, and now you're out in a fortress out in California while you're painting this picture that what do I have to fear? We were made men. Made men got whacked. Um, your 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 Billy's and Sally's, your viewers. I think you educated them, and you know the people that got hit were made. So Mike says I was a made man. Well, the only one I feared was the boss. The boss does. The boss can order the hit. Well, he's speaking in circles. Completely speaking in circles. Hey Wyatt Earp. Wow. The guy's unbelievable. This guy is unbelievable. This guy is a megalomaniac slash stand-up comic. He's becoming a stand-up comic, Mike Francis. Literally a stand-up comic. Let's watch the rest of this clown show. 
Tommy Stick Social Club, an absolute clown out of touch. Good morning, Tommy. Well, Roy DeMeo was mad at me. We're not going in the ring to fight, okay? We're not going to go and have a duel in the middle of the street. Roy DeMeo? <laughs> he, he, he actually says, Roy DeMeo. He brings up the most publicized psycho in this mafia soap opera deliberately he deliberately picks this is this is well orchestrated by him because if the mob soap opera and the viewers watch maybe they heard you know this butcher that chops people up oh, mike fancy said that nah, i would never you know sammy the bull roy the male I give him credit, A plus for uh, uh, being the conductor of an orchestra. Why doesn't he just be honest? Every year that goes by, he becomes more out of. Is he getting stu knots? Please forgive me, because maybe I'm getting a little stu knots, but maybe he is. Maybe he is. Here's a guy that ran and hit from everything known to mankind. And what's he say? What did I have to fear? I was a made man. So no made man got hit, Mike Francis. No, in the in the in in the history of the mob, no made man got hit. Holy cow. Yeah, Tommy Stick Social Club. Him and his, in my former life. You were an accountant for the for, for the Columbos. You were an accountant in my former life. Like, what is this former life he's talking about? Hey, Jim, this guy's talking about some former life. Is this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is this, um, uh, like, a riddle from the oracles, you know, when you're walking down the path and, and the oracles, they're like, they come with a riddle and, hey, there was a guy that had a former life. Who is this said guy? Well, they, they call him Mike Francis and he had a former life. <laughs> well, let's look into it. What is this? Come on. Yeah. Tommy Stig Social Club says he might have, he might not have feared death. That's different. He's bots. <laughs> now listen, in Mike Francis's defense, because I like to look at, uh, thank you, Tommy. I like to look at everything. There's guys that just rock and rolled out there that had no fear. They had no fear, but they feared if they got whacked, their family. I, I, I fear if my wife and children, I'm not there for them. I fear that my mommy, my daddy will mourn for me. They could be a renegade rock and roll Rambo all day long, but they're still humans. Even, even monsters are, even monsters are. I knew some monsters. Mike Francis, the accountant, who drinks his wine like this, had no fear. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying your cookies. I'm not buying your trinkets. I'm not buying your cruise. I'm not buying your pizza from some vending machine or whatever the, whatever scheme he's got coming up this week. It, it, it's it's totally insane. Come on, Mike. Just tell the. You see, this is. Now let's go. Let's get cerebral here. Let's get cerebral here. This is his thinking after the Joey Merlino uh, confrontation. This 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 is it because in his mind he's the author of the mob history. He's the mob of the historical. Uh, account and Joey Merlino come in and ruffled his feathers that knows he knows how what the DNA of Joey Merlino he knows the DNA of Joey Merlino so Joey Merlino comes in 
ruffles his feathers a, late, uh, a little bit. And here he comes. I don't fear anything. Are you listening, Joel Merlino? I don't fear anything. Really? Really? Go walk the streets of Brooklyn. Go, go walk this by yourself. Go walk the streets, Mr. No Fear. There's a nice delicatessen that you used to frequent. Why don't you go there? The guy's 90 years old. He'd like to see you. Yeah, I mean, your culture is California. California, California dreaming. The mamas and the papas. California dreaming. Californication. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Going to California, Led Zeppelin. That's you now. No more Frank Sinatra. New York, New York. No more. No more. Stay in that fortress over there like a petrified little rabbit. Okay? You're doing stand-up comedy now, Mike. You're actually doing... And when you bring that bum, Chaz Palminteri, on your show, it's even worse. It's even worse. Uh, my friend showed me this. Let's give it a run. My producer just said, run that back, Joe. Where is he? Where is he? Now, listen. Get your credit card out. It's going to cost you. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. In my former life, people would say, you know, were you afraid of Roy DeMeo? Were you afraid of Sammy Gravano? Were you afraid of these guys? What did I have to fear? I'm a made guy. If Sammy was mad at me, or if Roy DeMeo was mad at me, we're not going in the ring to fight, okay? We're not going to go and have a duel in the middle of the street. If somebody gets an order to kill another guy in that life, they're not going to know about it. You're not going to telegraph it. You know, you got to understand something. Made guys don't fear one another. <laughs> you might fear your boss because he's got the power of Really, Mike? Over you. But anybody else from another crew, another family, you're not really? fear of these people because you don't have to be. Please pay attention now. In my former life, people would say, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Please forgive me, but it, it boggles my mind. You be, just being aware and being careful is a, 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 a is fear driven, and. He's saying the only one he has to fear is the captains. That, well, I thought you were a boss. <laughs> well, because maybe he just considered himself a boss that then he just didn't fear anything because he was. But let's be let's be more rational and sensible here. I mean, come on. He says now, doesn't he even educate his viewers, his millions of viewers? He says the, the 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 premise of this is of this no fear that he claims to have. The premise of it is because he was a made man. Uh well, Mike, you were around when the when the blood was running deep in the streets of the of the mob wars, and um, all them guys were made men. Hello, they were all made men, so what's he standing on? What, what, what is he standing on? I, I don't understand. I don't understand that. Wyatt Earp. Hey, Francis, what's going on? Yeah, I get it. Avanish. I'm trying not to smoke. I get it, bro. I get it. I get it, bro. Trying not to smoke, you know, but I'm Jonesing. So I had to have one for the video. So uh, let's see what else goes on. Let's see what else is going on here. If I'm just talking, I'll just cut it short. One minute. Are you afraid of shit? It's only a one minute video. It's only a one minute video. I, it, it, it's there's nobody in his Hollywood production team. Those those brown noses. Yeah, that's. There's uh. Now you think. 
Like, see, everybody around him is so removed. He's just into being a Hollywood actor uh, with all this BS. And so there, so there's nobody even in his production and his staff that could even see these types of things to say, well, wait a minute, uh, you know, um, didn't made men get hit too, Mike? Uh, like anybody around or were they just afraid to speak up against him or, you know, so, uh, geez, uh, 99.9% .9 of the people that got whacked were made men, but he said he didn't have to fear anything because he was a made man. And you'd only have to fear the bosses and the captains. Well, I thought you were a boss and a captain. Well, what is it here? Just throw all the balls in the air. You know, the circus has started. And then just just try to keep as many of those balls in the air. I don't know, folks. But uh, I, I was going back, and I just wanted to refresh some of the things. If, if people were new here, and uh, I've done, of course, many videos about Mike. And just just to let you know. And then they come, and then his, his defenders come in and... They uh they uh defend him. <laughs> they defend him, like he's like they're part of his crew. You know, he's like 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 his defenders are part of the uh, sit downs. They're suckers. They're buying all that swampland he's he's spewing, and and then they even go to the extent to put comments in and defend him. Man. And he wouldn't urinate on them same people if they were on fire. That's the kicker. That's the kicker. Get your credit card out, suckers. All right. So uh, that video goes on. There's, there's another one I'm going to do and I'm going to refresh. So stay aware. There's going to be another one. When uh, my godfather, uh, my godfather did work for the Columbos and everything. Hey, Mr. Garcia. And um, be, uh, uh, keep an eye out because, you know, I pump these out. Even I'm feeling sick today under the weather. But I, I was going through some things. I wanted to refresh and update some of the old videos. And I don't have the tech. I just put it up there. You guys know. But um. I want to do another, uh, uh, I'm going to refresh another video. Well, it might, some of the rest of it might be on here. Let's check this out. I better do it now. Uh, nobody in that production team, because they want to get a paycheck, nobody said, listen, Mike, that's probably not a good idea to do that video. Because even a Joe Blow schmuck would, would be able to perceive that and say, Mike, you know, it's just... Everybody has the emotion of fear in them just in everyday life or however. But then when you rise the ante, raise the ante up in the mob, uh, yeah. What about the wars? Everybody's running around crazy. Yeah, you fear for self because we want self preservation and we want longevity in our life to enjoy our life, our lives. Our, our quality of life, our family. Of course you've got to fear things. He just says across the board, oh, I never feared anything in my former life. I didn't fear Mickey C, well, Roy D, uh, 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 some other psychos out there, uh, Jimmy M, there's two. You didn't fear. You could only you could only pay off so many people, but there was still, you know, what you didn't fear anybody. Why? Because you paid them all off, Mike. Then you slept good at night. Then you run for that scum state. How you doing? Lance thirty three. Happy New Year to all you people. But this is the soap opera, and uh, I wanted to get some jabs in because, you know what, I don't care anymore. I said I wasn't going to do it, but you know what, jump in, the water's fine, and, uh, you know, I don't care 
whose side the people are on. I mean, I wouldn't be against because I've had friends that we've been in disagreement with and we'll talk smack to each other and then still be friends. Not like little girls. Oh, you said this to me. We'll never talk again. Oh, you said this to me. How dare you? No, I'm a big boy. You could talk smack to me and I could give it back. And then we could still go to the racetrack together. But like him, he's so like little girlish with his little wine. And he's so little girlish that he would be open to that. He would say, I don't remember you. You would remember me. You'd remember my godfather, too. And I'd say, Mike, listen, all things aside, Mike, I know it's a soap opera, but you're starting to embarrass yourself. Don't you have any producers or directors to tell you to take your 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 your, your content in another direction? Now, OK, let's just get this established. You want to go to the racetrack? But number one, as far as your YouTube channel goes, Mike, it's hilarious. You're full of shit and you talk condescending down to your people and you're so greedy. But if that's what it takes, I guess you know the formula better than me because you got a million subscribers and I got 400. But at the end of the day, I'm better than him. I'm better than him. <laughs> I'm you confident. Hey. Uh, welcome in, ladies. Uh, Saint Forty Four. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it is allergies too down here. Uh, Tony, uh, Mr. Sekariasen. I'm just showing a reaction to uh, Mike, and for the new people that come in and just kind of see what is all about. And you know how I do it here. So I appreciate the new people come in. Uh, we're on our way to two thousand. I know I got a thousand and three, but. We're still on our way to 2,000 subs. So uh, I appreciate the people that come in here. And Francis, I saw you on Facebook. You're be very beautiful. You know? God, beautiful, classy. Uh, all right, you get the you get the message. <laughs> Lady Saint, thank you. Tony Lucas. Joe Garcia. I, I love you, Joe. I love you, Wyatt Earp. And Michael Candinas. I think my show doesn't officially start until Mike Candinas, Mike Candinas comes in here. <laughs> I don't think my show officially starts. I love you guys. You know, I try to spread. Oh, geez. What are you doing again? Joe, it's because the wine wasn't poured a certain way. It wasn't underhanded. Joe, you're sick. Some of that American wine, it's only 300 a bottle. But the aroma cures colds, overdrafts from the bank, and allergies. <laughs> Who are you? How do you know about these overdrafts at the bank? Hey. <laughs> I love you, James McCarthy. I got to repeat that. Joe, it's because the wine was imported a certain way. Oh, you want to pee your pants? He was pouring it. If you pour, I got to put this down. Man, thank you. I love you. I love you guys. I got to, uh, uh, Joe, nights start tonight. <sighs> I need a deep breath. You got to check that out, folks. He does a short and he's like schooling. It's like, uh, it's like a, 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 a robin in the nest that's feeding the little hatchlings or whatever. You know, a robin's putting the worms in their little mouths. You, you know, the mother robin is putting feeding all the little things. Well, he's got a table. He's set up. He's the mother robin. You got all these cronies, and he's going, you pour the wine like this, and it means this. And, and then beware because you better exit stage left because it could be, oh, really? Please, uh. Uh, 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 do tell. Well, okay. If you go like this with the, with the underhand flip flop, zigzag, daddy wag, give the dog a bone. 72.4 degrees this way. It means this. God forgive me. I try to spread, I try to spread love and compassion. God, I'm trying, but geez. 
the aroma and the Sauvignon and the and the <coughs> see striking me. It's got a fresh bouquet of the vineyards of the dried out drought grapes and the droughts and everything. Come on, man. What the heck? Then he talks about he didn't fear anything, James. The aroma of this fresh bouquet is good for allergies, pollen, dander, uh, pollution. The heck? That wine might even cure arthritis. Might have to check into it. I might have to freaking finance a bottle. Jeez, I'm, I'm, I got to finance a bottle. See, this James gets me started. Thank, thank you, James, for your support, bro. This James gets me started. How do you have? How do you know this information? Do I do so many videos? I forget what I say. I don't think I ever mentioned overdrafts before. I don't think I ever did, bro. Oh, man. I, I love all you guys. <sighs> Where were we? Um, yeah, the guy never feared anything. I'm trying to uh, update the uh, new, new, new subscribers on some of the stuff I said about Mike Francis. And then, and then uh, of course, I don't want to do the complete bash, bash, bash. But um, uh, just expose some people to another, another, uh, version, an, another, um, uh, uh, perception. And I was, I was running, I was running around back then. Uh, you're going on the night tour. Are you a, a personal friend of mine that I just don't know about? Because this is like turning into the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I, 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 thank you, James. Thank you. You got me sweating over here. Thank you. Um, so uh, you're a performer. You're a musician that goes out and plays. You're a musician. You're not the old DC white boy that was internationally. Are you? A, are you a different name of the DC white boy that changed names? Mm. This is turning to a, a detective show. I appreciate your support, man. This guy's helped me out a lot. Holy cow! Uh, so yeah, a good old friend, Mike. Man, I mean, you know, he's got a right to hustle and, and all that kind of stuff. Yes. But, you know, I I like to look at things psychologically. You know me. Peel the layers back. Look at things. Be be more informed when, when his cronies are sticking up for him and he couldn't care less about his people. I love my people. He could care less. He has a right to sell anything he wants under the sun. Yes. But he's not breaking any ground for any, any charities or anything like that. So I, that, that's how you've heard it before, folks. You heard it before here. I was, I'm doing that other video, which I'm. you, you get the message, but... I'm going to go back and uh, look at stuff because I'm going to do uh, when I was down in the streets with him and my godfather came up on it and it's a good story and we'll do that when, uh, we'll see, Mike was in the Columbos and, and my godfather did work for the Columbos. So there was a story when I had to go down to New York and then everybody was together in the street, like, and it's things like that. So I did that story, but I'm going to redo it to update uh, you good, you folks, you know. So uh, that's that. Yeah, I, I was trying not to smoke, but uh, I was jonesing. So I'm only taking a couple puffs because I got to quit this filthy habit. It's terrible. 
Then you get the allergies and everything else. I got the allergies. I'm Jones and my screen is freezing. I'm like the guy that just just always gets beat down. Just boom. But and I'm still trying to rise up. That's life. That's life. We're, that's going to happen. So we got to got to maintain we got to maintain our focus and uh Wyatt Earp don't start talking about what kind of wines you like and everything this is an anti-wine show <laughs> good to see you Wyatt Earp good to see you does it have a fresh bouquet a nice Sauvignon from the vineyards of those dried out vineyards and, you know, the vineyards of Southern France. And Lady Saint, how are you? Uh, I'm, I got to quit. I got to quit for health reasons, financial reasons. I'm paying to hurt myself. And addictions are hard. You know, I beat the hardest addictions, but this nicotine is like, it, this nicotine, nicotine, this nicotine rivals other uh, addictive substances. Nicotine, boy, who, who? Holy cow. Yeah, and I was against it for so long, too. So, uh, what, what is uh, Sauvignon, anyways? You know, it has a nice Sauvignon. What is that? Am I using the wrong terms, even? Even to joke about it, am I using the wrong terms? Even joking, or even to joke about it, am I using the, you know? All right, my good lady, Francis, thank you for coming in and keep, keep the old man company. Uh, uh, lady Saint 44, thank you, Wyatt Earp. James McCarthy, my man, I got to hug you and I got to shake your hand. I don't care if it's whatever, whatever, I don't care. I got to hug you. I'm not going to kiss you, but I want to hug you. Give you a little pat on the back. <sighs> the show must go on. The show must go on. So, uh, Wyatt Earp, my Wyatt Earp's 85. He'll be a centurion. I really have to slow down because I do have COPD and it's affecting my voice too. I'm getting a raspy voice. This is not good. I better arrest it now. But I was proud of myself. I cut back yesterday a little bit and I'm doing the same thing today. Now I'll try to ration this rest of this cigarette out. I'll try to ration it out for like four hours. This half a smoke is going to have to last me till like, 2 p.m., 3 p.m. So do whatever you got to do, Joe. But you, you, you could take one puff and put it out. You could smoke it all up at once. But you can't have another one until 3. You can't take a couple more puffs. You can't bust open a new cigarette. See how this is? You used to do it with dope. Dope. When you'd have a bag of dope and say, well, you got to ration this out. Then I'm going to quit. You know, it's all, this addiction is bad. And I was actually a credential drug counselor once upon a time in a faraway land. You see? So well-versed and knowledgeable in all these areas. And then I just do, do what, what, you know, I don't know, but I'm alive now. We're all alive now. We could play the violin. Uh, 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 uh. I made so many mistakes. I made, no, no, no. We could still do it. We could still do it. Maybe I can go to 80. I, You know, I'm 60. Maybe I could go to 80 years old. And, and like maybe two or three years from now, I could have, I could tell you, wow, I've, I, it's been two years and I quit smoking and, and, you know, have some good reports and stuff like that. We go from bashing Mike Francis to I'm trying to quit smoking. What kind of channel is this, folks? This just is a talk show. What, what is this? <laughs> what is this stuff? Uh, 
Hey, hey. Got to have goals. Hey, and Bronx, man, I appreciate you coming in here and been helping me out a long time, you know? I like that name, too. I'm into these names. I'm into these names. Thank you, James McCarthy. Man, you, you're good. You're a good guy. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna make you guys proud. Oh, Lady Saint. Um, I don't look sixty. You'd have thought I was late forties to early fifties. Thank you. I should get the Eddie Munster shoe shine black hair dye. I prefer a brown. And I have put a lot of wear and tear on my body, but I am starting to feel it now, so I better catch up. I better I better get it together. Thank you, Lady Saint 44. Um Now listen. Thinking about this bottle. Hey, I was on. Hey, thank you, NYC uh, Crime. Mike Francis is packaging of that wine, though, is impeccable. It's impeccable, you know. Hey, Craven, because when I was on that uh, uh, the NYC Crime Spot uh, show doing the interview, we he was he was pulling up those uh, those. The, those bottles and the packaging of, of course you got to pay for it, but man, they were beautiful. Shout out to Brett. Thank you for helping me out. Get my, get over a thousand K. Thank you, Brett. And you're going to be over a hundred K before long. So that's cool. But boy, that he, uh, they, well, he, yeah, that the marketing and stuff like that, the packaging was beautiful uh, on that wine. I, I wouldn't want to even throw out the box. The wine came in, the wine bottle. I would, The box was so nice. I wouldn't even want to throw the, bo the, the box out. That's how nice that, that wine was packaged. Hey, I give credit. I mean, I'm not just going to be, you know, it looked nice. It looked nice. Well, we used to pour the wine at the sit-downs because it would ease the tension. Now there's marketing. I got three degrees in marketing and advertising and verbal communications and statistical analysis and everything under the sun. It didn't serve me because I wasted my time. I wasted my life, but I'm making a comeback. Now there's marketing and everything, but he's, he should have, uh, well, let's just leave it at that. My mind is, my mind is getting shot, but but he, he, he tried to integrate this wine into the sit-downs, that the wise guys drank wine at the sit-downs. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tony, two fingers. Uh, come on. We're, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, Jimmy Jackhammer, come on. We're going to have a sit-down. Uh, what do you prefer, uh, Tony, two fingers? I'd like a... I'd like a cup of that. I don't even know any wines. I'd like a cup of that 1977 uh, fresh bouquet with a light aroma. And uh, yeah, okay. What do you want, Johnny Jackhammer? Oh, let me get that uh, that that rosé uh, from. Uh, the light rosé, blah, 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 and all that. All right. Okay. That'll get our tensions relieved when we're going to talk about uh, some very important issues. Yeah. That'll ease the pressure. He integrates that. Just, just in lieu of trying to sell his wine. He could sell his wine, but he made himself look silly like that. You know. Hey, Tommy, two thumbs. Yeah, so listen, boys and girls, it would ease the tension at, at the sit-downs. I saw some sit-downs. If you drink 
a Pepsi, a Coke, a lemonade, a water, a Manhattan, a BV, or Black Velvet, or anything. You're just drinking whatever the hell you want. It's not based on anything. It's not based on anything. What, what, his marketing has gone nuts. It's not based on anything. Come on. So, you know, I got to take a couple of puffs because of this guy. You're killing me. Forgive me. Forgive me, God. Yeah. I understand the culture of Italians and people or in any uh, nationality to, culturally speaking, have wine at the table during dinner time and stuff like that within the household. But he transposes it to sit downs. And now at all these sit downs, yeah, we used to ease the stress. Up. You know, I was thinking about whacking this guy. But you know what? This wine has such a fresh bouquet that we're going to give up. We're going to let the guy go. <laughs> hey, Tony, uh, Tony Lucas, how you doing? Joe, love watching you get entertainment comedy and tell the absolute truth. Thank you, man. I love you. I love you guys. That guy, Michael, asking for 250 a day to say happy birthday. What a dope. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Thank you for helping me out, Tony Lucas. Here's another kicker. Now, listen. Anybody that wants me to tell them happy birthday on a recorded message, happy birthday, Billy. Get your credit card out. It's going to be a couple hundred dollars. Why didn't he just go to his Patreon people or whoever out of generosity? This this Christian, this Christian, out of you got all the money in the world. Have them talk. Get on the phone. Talk to a few of your people. Nah, get your credit card out. Come on, you know. Congratulations on your uh, graduation at uh, college. Where's that credit card? You got hey, you got those credit card numbers? Congratulations. You know, I'm very proud of you, Billy. You, you know, you studied hard and you made it. And, and now you're going to go off into the world. Just make sure you put that credit card number in there. Come on. Does anything ever truly legitimate come from this guy? I used to read at the start of my thing, Jesus calling. Jesus calling Christian to give something spiritually to, to just to help. I don't have a lot to offer. I just try to entertain and everything. But geez, I, I try to be for the underdog. Yeah, they, they got that whatever it is where uh, entertainers and notable people can can leave messages for people, but they got to pay for it. I understand that's marketing. Everybody's got a right to hustle. But you'd think if it was me, I'd have a hotline. If I got all those subs, I'm going to have a hotline. This is in from uh, uh, Randy from uh, Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Randy. Uh, welcome to the show. I, I, I'm going to have people call live for free, for free. No, he wants to sell three words. I don't know, man. I don't know. I guess I want the world to be a perfect place, but it just can't be. The world just can't be a perfect place. I'm not perfect either, but yeah. Mm. Tony, welcome aboard, Tony uh, and Craven and James McCarthy and Lady Saint. <laughs> I did the video of that documentary, my friend. And of course, I'm not a tech guy. I put the phone up here. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get it together sooner or later. And it, they were talking about the gas cat. Uh, there was a documentary, a well, well, well produced documentary about all of that. Mike and uh, the other characters in it and what transpired and his mother. And I put the phone up here like this. And his mother said, I never saw a single penny of that money. Hmm. There's other things I know, but I have to have some scruples and everything that I know through the grapevine, which might be true. It might be false, but 
if I had to get off an island, I would say it, it's the truth. So I could get, you know, me, I'm crazy. I, if I got, if I'm stranded on an island and I got to make a position or take a stance on what is what, well, I would lean and say, well, I, I, that's believable. That's true. Could I get off of Gilligan's Island now? So she said, I never saw a penny and they were struggling. They had to go allegedly everything on this show is allegedly because I don't want nothing, but you know, them guys, well, good. I got a small channel. So, but they, she said she had to go to social services. Allegedly. But I heard the words coming out of her mouth from that interview. Can you imagine when she was telling Sonny in prison? Well, Michael's over there making all this money. And we're living, we're not living uh, that high off the hog, to say the least, for understatement. Isn't that your most sacred bond, a mother, son? I'm a mama's boy. I'm proud to say I'm a mama's boy. Ain't that, especially if your mother struggled, ain't that the most sacred bond? that she was nurturing you and loving you. And then all of a sudden you got all this money and she said it, go back in my videos in my library, go back. You'll see that her words, not mine, her words. I never saw a single penny. Mm. Uh, hey, James McCarthy, man, you got to stick around for a while, once in a while. Joe, I'm going to send you that bottle of wine Mike had with a cool bottle. Oh, it's a, it's a two-bottle minimum, Mr. McCarthy? What? Wait a minute here. Joe, I'm going to send you that bottle of wine Mike had with the cool bottle. Is it that burgundy? And all it said, two bottle. And it. It's a two bottle minimum. The packaging was impressive, James. That packaging was impressive. Man, I would keep the bottle when the wine was gone and make it into a candle holder. And I'd keep the box just to look at it as a decorative, whatever. <laughs> maybe, maybe put it, maybe I get put it right here. Mike Francis's box of wine right here. I put it in my. I put it in my studio right here in a beautiful bottle uh, package, the box. Thank you, James, for hanging around for a little while. But I don't know, man. I'm for the underdog. I'm for love and compassion. But, geez, so that's what his mom said, you know. And then I go on and, and, and inside I'm saying, Joe, you're going a little too far. You're going a little too far, Joe. Uh, I don't know. Gosh. If that Mama Luke could get a million subscribers, I could get 10 million. If that, forgive me. I, I, I'm a contradiction. I want to spread love and compassion, but then I don't demonstrate it. You know? Off of how this guy raking is something like eight millionaire never happened more than once. That's a definite degree. We're all rolled up into one. You know, everybody has a right to make money and be successful and everything else, but we're all gonna die someday. So try to do some good deeds in between. And then at and then on their deathbed, they're going, please God, please God. Oh, please God, please God. You know, then the then it turns into the prayer begging. Okay. Now I'm really going to go nuts. People uh, live their lives and everything. And maybe maybe they're not that uh, pay much attention to spirituality and things like that. Okay. Maybe people just go on and they, they whether they go to church or not, or whether how their spiritual beliefs are and however, however they roll through the trajectory of their life, okay? But 
at the moment of truth when Aunt Sally is in bed begging for her life, everybody's standing around the bed going, please God, please God, please God. Oh, now they know God, this said God. Now, please God, please God. Now they're prayer beggars, you know? Tony, thank you, man. See, I appreciate uh, holding people up. So, Joe, you will reach 100,000 and go to a million subscribers. It's going to happen. We're going to manifest this right into reality because you know what? I'm going to do another video about the Matrix and all that. But I believe as if it already happened. So it's going to catch up. Thank you, Tony Lucas. I like these names, man. I like these names. Oh, this guy better realize God does not sleep and God does not like ugly. You want to really get into uh, uh, sacrilegious stuff? Well, I said the one thing about prayer begging. And nobody's perfect. And we go through struggles when people are in the hospital and fighting for their lives and everything. But why, why beg to God when people don't even have a relationship with God? So it's like having a, uh, it's like seeing a girl on the street and you run up to her, her and just start kissing her. I, hey, me, who, who, man, sexy, fine woman. She goes back and says, who the hell are you? Get off of me, you perv. Why are you kissing me and like all that? Well, uh, well, we, 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 we I don't even know you, let alone have a relationship with, with you. So it's like uh, people aren't in relationship with their spiritual God. And then all of a sudden they want something out of this non-relationship. So I'm not the spokesperson for God or anything like that, but I'm trying to figure this out in my crazy mind. But I can't just go bum rush some fine, sexy girl and start kissing her because we are out of relationship. I don't know her name. She don't know mine, but I want to get in. I want to get down and dirty with her. No. You know, at least ask her for if she wants to have a coffee first, then go. Rock and roll. <laughs> now that we've had our cup of coffee, Sally, uh, let's go get a room. So. I spiritualistic speaking, uh, if you're going to be in a relationship with a spiritual God or a spiritual essence or something like that, um, get to know them first before you start begging for prayer, begging, please, God, please, God, please, God. Well, God, who are you? Who are you? Uh, we're not in relationship. More or less, you have to establish a relationship before that there could be a two-way street of giving and taking. So, and here's a guy that the cell opened up in the prison. The rainbow and stars and beams of light came, while he was in solitary confinement. It all opened up. It was like the leprechaun on the rainbow. You know, it's magically delicious. You know, I, I mean, he might have saw a leprechaun. Legend has it. Legend hand has it. There was a leprechaun when the when the when the prison opened when the when it opened up, and he had a revelation. And when when the light was over, there was a Bible. There was a Bible, and now he's got the Church of Might. But what are his deeds? Now I'm I'm biblical literate. And there's your words and deeds, words and deeds. So if he's so biblical literate, why does he, and he's got the church, why doesn't he demonstrate it? It's just a human, forget about mob, forget about mob, just humanistically speak. I don't know. I got $20, I'm going somewhere. I, I, I'll give 10 to a hobo. James McCarthy, you better hang out in here, man. Joe, you have to set up a cruise to Cuba. 10,000. 10, you, you, you want me to get... You're baiting me. Uh, I got, I'm got. i setting up a cruise, folks, for 10,000 ahead. Okay? We're going to try to... I, I might throw you a cigar, too. 
uh, cruising with the truth serum. Now, you know we'd have fun. If I could afford it, I'd hold a, I'd hold a contest and just, I would just uh, uh, raffle it for free. Ten people. And let's go hang out and have some fun. Mike charged 10000 a head. 10000 a head. And instead of just going with his immediate family, he wants to tow 100 people in tow. Don't you want to just spend some quality time? Oh, bring jazz too. <laughs> <laughs> Bring old Jazz too. Come on, Jazz. Let me pick up some of your face off the floor and paste it back on. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. Forgive me. I shouldn't say that. Forgive me. James, you're baiting me, man. You're, you're, you're baiting me. <laughs> so he wants to he, he wants to turn it into a profit. He wants to make a profit on that. You can't just take your wife and family to Cuba and have a nice fun. Uh, excuse me, honey. Uh, listen, take Sally and Karen and Cindy. Uh, go back to the hotel room. I got to entertain 100 people now. Well, what do you mean? Well, I didn't tell you, but uh, I, I sold this cruise. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, 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 honey. Uh, so uh, I got to entertain them now. So you, you and you and uh Cindy and Sally, you go back up to the room and wait for me until I'm done. Well, you never told me that you're going to have all these people in tow. And now you got to entertain them. I thought this was a personal vacation. Now, nah, honey, you know, I looked at the uh, I looked at the balance sheet of our finances and uh, it's kind of slacking a little bit, you know. So uh, I'm going to have to grab, uh, grab all the crumbs and off the floor. And, uh, you know, it's like. Mm. What? How much money can you want? Is our personal experiences more valuable that you can look back and say, wasn't that a nice cruise we took with the children? Wasn't that a nice cruise we took? Aren't these memories and experiences more valuable than that money? You got to entertain all these people? Hmm. It's almost 11. Yeah, I'm trying to ration. Thank you, Tony Lucas. Yeah. Yesterday, I did good. There was success yesterday. I have to ask for forgiveness every day, at least five times, because where I work, which is a major retailer. Yeah. You know what? We all fall short. Romans 11.16. Now, I know it's not 11.16, but it's in Romans. I used to know it. We all fall short of our heavenly glory. Yeah, it's tough to make it through this world. The world is a vampire. Yeah, it is. You know, and I want to demonstrate love and compassion. It'll make you nuts. You don't want to end up like me. Wasted a lot of time. Uh, uh, wasted too much time. You know. Now listen. So, yeah, James, we'll bring Chaz to two Hollywood actors, MF which is a MF, and jazz. Got a nice serving on with the thing that got a fresh bouquet. Hmm. From the vineyards of Timbuktu. Hmm. Hey, Sally, check this out. Smells like wild Irish rose. Ain't that $2.99 a bottle? No, it's got a fresh bouquet, Sally. Here. No, I think it smells like a five dollar. No, but it's the grapes of the southern regions of France. I don't know. I'm not too sure about that, MF. Please forgive me. You're doing part Joe the world as a vampire, but we're lucky we have good people. Thank you, Tony Lucas. Thank you. I'm glad we got good people like you. The world is a vampire. Boom, 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 boom. Smashing pumpkins. 
Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a cage. Someone would say what is lost that can never be saved. No, if you're lost, you can be saved. You can be saved. Okay? It was a Hollywood production, just like you. Can we establish that, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Tony, this man's right. Wow, they had a lot of good songs. And the the orchestra the orchestral value of Tonight Tonight, Tony. The orchestral value, symf symphony, symphony-esque, if that's a word, of that is so beautiful. Believe in me, because I believe in you tonight, tonight. You guys get it all here. What the hell's going on? Craven's got some biblical knowledge. Wow, Craven. During the course of the day, three individuals came knocking on a man's door, begging for money, shelter. No, three times the man turned the strange way, saying, I'm sorry. And Craven's got the, the cerebral thing. Yeah. 1979. Pumpkins, 1970. They got every song was a hit. Every song was a hit. Laid back, 1970. Ooh, la, la. Uh, everyone's running for the door. Yeah. I don't even know what kind of music they got out anymore. But we still can have fun in what we do. Let the world be crazy. We're in, a, we're in our old world. We're in our own worlds. So, you know. 1979, just laid back, me don't even care. They're just cruising along, the sun is shining, la la, mm -mm. 19, just everything's nice. The colors, the, 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 the feeling, just good feeling stuff. The visual and the musical was just a perfect marriage. I wish I had, uh, well, I can't, I'm happy. I'm happy, I don't wanna go nuts. But yeah, smashing pumpkins. I was watching some things on YouTube when he was getting interviewed and he had a guitar and he had another expert and he and he was talking like, uh, uh, as his, like, t like he's older now. Hey, Big J Biz. And he was talking about the uh, the mechanics of the song and how he he was uh, producing it in his mind. And you know, he's talking about the G minor, uh, the D, the A B C D E, you know, the chords. And I thought it would sound better in the in the R flat and the G minor. And and then it came out like this. But then I went back and uh, redubbed it or redid that. And I, then I had another idea beautiful uh interview like what you like to hear how jimmy page and, uh, uh uh and and um uh the other members of led zeppelin like when they're in the laboratory if anybody's in with uh, a musician like they were in the laboratory jefferson airplane yeah uh And of course, I like the grunge too. I like Nirvana. Uh, I like Stone Temple Pilots. I like Soundgarden. Uh, I, I, I like them all. I, I like that grunge. And you know what? I was running around crazy. And, you know, I was like, well, if Kurt Cobain's high on this, I, 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 should, I should go rock and roll. But it wasn't his fault. I did. All, I, I, ruined, I ruined my life on my own. I didn't need any other help, you know. But yeah, that was a good era of, of, of music, you know. Uh, Pearl Jam. Hey, yeah. Uh, Weezer. 
We, you, I don't look like Buddy Holly. Uh, oh, and I got the Buddy Holly glasses. And no Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> uh, we, you, I don't look like Buddy Holly. Uh, oh, does it? Does he say, uh, oh? And no man, 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 this creative talents out there. So palatable. I like saying this shit. So palatable to the ear. Kurt Cobain, God bless him, God rest him. He was very, very intelligent. And he was doing a rare interview. Hey, Marta, he was doing a rare interview. And he said uh, he was trying to follow certain um historical things about music i mean of course they they all knew about zeppelin the who the beatles and the beatles was very integral in in some of those nice little ditties that uh kurt cobain integrated into them songs now this is a music show so uh he he said after the beatles and after other things uh he said i had to just realize that Anything that is palatable to the ear will sell, you know, but he didn't want to be a sellout and just do commercialized records. But uh, when that first video came out on MTV, Smells Like Teen Spirit, when that first video came out, I was watching it and I went, this is a masterpiece like Beethoven. This is like, wow. You know, thank you, Tony Lucas, Collective Soul. And um, I worked at a place. Yes, folks, I actually worked once upon a time. I worked at a place, uh, uh, um, um, uh, amusement park. And uh, I was in the finance department. And I would go backstage and um, uh, what the hell? Man, I'm losing my mind. Uh Who, who's that? Uh, Metallica. Metallica. Uh, and so I would just make excuses when there were groups just to go back and, and just try to see how they are just naturally removed, just removed from their music. And James uh, Hatfield, because he the singer was like he the name, the Hatfield. He, he is a descendant from like the Hatfields and the McCoys. <laughs> And they were talking. Now, the guy with the long, dark, black, the long, black, curly hair, uh, the guitar, and there was another one, and then the drummer. These guys were intelligent. And they wrote poetry. Poetry. And very impressive very 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 impressive alice in chains ellen alice in chains uh lane staley very very impressive yeah god bless him uh uh and the, uh the guy in his band that that did a lot of the uh production um well i can't remember Lane Staley, but the the main guy that did a lot of the arrangements and everything was uh, a, a farmer, a farm boy, a farm boy from like Missouri or Kansas. Uh, who's the guy that was in Alice in Chains? I need help. Yellow Lead Better, Pearl Jam. Uh, who was the guy uh, uh, in Alice in Chains? Uh, I'm having fun with you guys, man. Thank you. Well, I always do anyways. Uh, who the heck was that guy? Uh, I got, I was lucky enough to talk to uh, 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 a lot of these people. Uh, a guy, well, they were switching a couple guys around in uh, um, 
uh, Allison Chains. And one of the guys was from Brooklyn. I can't remember his name, though. But, uh, yeah. And uh, I got I got the opportunity. And then even, like, uh, Matchbox 20 come around here, like, Matchbox. Uh one of the guys told I got them to go on the phone and, and tell my sister happy birthday. Uh, all right, Wyatt Earp. Yeah, Lane Staley uh, was his name. Yeah, Lane Staley, the front man. But who was the guitarist in the back? He actually did solo work, too, after uh, Lane passed away. Who was that guitarist? He arranged and produced mostly everything. And they co-wrote. But uh, he was very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, they got a core value of, you know, we see these groups and these big, big names and they got good, good songs and good feeling and everything. But they're great musicians that know these chords and 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 how to produce this and uh you, you know, uh, the put the hook in here and uh, formulate this 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 uh, this artwork. You know, put this artwork together. Jerry Contrell, geez, thank you, Tony. Yeah, and uh, he was he was very you know a big piece of that. Real, I mean, these guys were expert musicians. Now, we all know about Jimmy Page and uh, John Bonham. I mean, you got arguably uh, the best uh, vocalist, lead vocalist, you know, uh, um, uh, wow, what am I? <sighs> Robert Plant, probably the greatest voice ever. I mean, there's other great voices. Jimmy Page. There's no debate. There's no debate. Good guitar. John Bonham. No debate. No debate. John Bonham. All experts in their craft. What about good old John Paul Jones? Wow. How these guys came across each other's paths to produce this artwork. Wow. I think that, that I think I think that's when God, the heavens open up and just goes, you, you, and you, and you, you're gonna go rock and roll and do this. Uh so uh we're gonna put you guys together and you know. But it, but it was, uh, you know, Lucifer was the uh, the the God. Lucifer was the the saint of music. Lucifer, and it's all demonic and all that. We ain't gonna get into all of that. That's too much to unpack, you know. All that, and then they stayed at that house of uh. Uh, Alistair Crawley, and they produced that one album that was one of their, well, every album was great, but they, pro they, they produced that album in that mansion from, you know, these uh, devil worshipers, I guess. I don't know. You know, but uh, yeah, that was, uh, thank you, Tony. So, uh, uh, yeah, hey, this show, you, you, you come here and join me. You take a ride with me. You, we'll start here, but we don't know where we're going to end. And uh, I appreciate all the support. Uh, I do kind of feel bad about bashing, but I still do it. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Jimmy Page. Oh, man. I still see Jimmy Page. I... I I scroll YouTube just to see Jimmy Page. Like, what what did he say today? But 
when they're talking about the early days and how well this guy was going to join the band, but Jimmy Page was a a, a, a a child prodigy or prodigy, yeah, a child prodigy that you could see him when he was seven, like in an uh, early kid, like in the late fifties, and 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 his hair was slicked back, and it's a little Jimmy Page, and and he's talking about so he did session work. He did session work for like whatever, if some people needed somebody to play. So by the time he was a teenager, he was better than guys that were supposed to be accomplished guitarists that were 25, 30, 40, 80, 90. So, so he was recognized early. The Yardbirds, the Yardbirds, man, thank you. Thank you, James McCarthy, the Yardbirds. So that whole dynamic of who came here and the one guy refused he thought they weren't going to go anywhere. I, I don't remember his name, but the guy older, he he says, nah, I think I better stay here with these guys. Uh, this Robert Plant and these other guys, I don't see them making too much ground in the music industry. <laughs> <clears throat> the rest is history. But that's all their personal touch. Maybe that guy enjoyed his group of people and they got off like that. But yeah. So Jimmy Page started coming around. And um, they're bouncing around these parts of England and everything. And then um, came a point in time when Jimmy Page got together with Robert Plant. And, uh, you know, he started throwing. He was like, geez, you know, this guy, you, you know, they've been around the clubs uh, of England playing shows. And, and uh, you know, small venue stuff, but but Robert Plant and maybe I think Bonzo joined. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Well, at some point in time, and uh, they said, "This boy, this Jimmy Page. What the heck? How? Who is this guy?" And he was more or less brung up like more like as like a square not not as an insulting or anything a good boy a good boy 1950s 1960s proper and everything and then when he turned it loose man yeah there's a lot of good songs but uh that achilles last stand live I tell you, if there's a bucket list, okay, there's stairway to heaven. There's a lot of different things, but Achilles, Achilles' last stand, live or even the production, the the after thing. Wow, Jeff Beck. People don't realize Jeff Beck, Clapton. How did these people? Uh, they were in one band. <laughs> they were in one band. Holy cow, man, I'm loving this show. Thank you, guys. I'm loving this stuff. Who am I going to talk to about this stuff sitting here all by myself? Wow, Jeff Beck and the project, the Jeff Beck project, right? Excuse me. I think it was, oh, was it the Alan Parsons project? I don't know. I'm not, Jimmy, can you imagine that? Yeah, Jimmy's heavy, rich, and interesting solo is a legend. Yeah, I mean, but now uh, having the ability, having the ability to master the instrument is one thing because there's guys like Satriani that are just very experts like that Joe Satriani or somebody. They're experts on all of that stuff. But you got four experts in one group that gel and blend because you know, I mean, they happen to be all the masters and maybe some some consider best. Each person in that band was the best on their instrument. Plant on the vocals. He'd come with a tambourine once in a while. But what a god he was. The hair, the blonde curly hair, the jeans, the shirt. Wow, what a rush he must have had. He must have felt like 
uh, a Greek guy. He's not Greek, but he must have felt like, wow, I got my team here. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. What a what a uh, rush. Or, you know. Yeah. And Eric Clapton, guitarist too, you know. Yeah. And I love when Robert Plant, they're, he's, they're, they're getting down. Jimmy Page is drenched, drenched, drenched. And they're getting down, and they know they're the best. And I like to look at things a little deeper and everything. And he looks over at Jimmy Page, and the place is going nuts. And they just know. Like he looked and Jimmy Jimmy Page went with the double, the double neck, the double neck. And Jimmy Page, he's sweating everything. He looks like, yeah, we're the best ever. He's looking at him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you you think you think that was good, Robert? Here, watch this one. Oh, you think that was something here? And they knew how to bring it. The they're they're on stage chops. Every aspect of entertainment they mastered and conquered. The movements on the stage. It's, I love that stuff. I love it all. I, I love that stuff. Jeff Beck doesn't get enough credit. Mr. McCarthy. The Yardbirds. That era of time. Now, you got. we got to realize. We have to realize when each generation, uh, who influenced these people, like Kurt Cobain says, well, so-and-so influ uh, influenced me. The uh, Paul McCartney said, so-and-so influenced me. And, you know, uh, Jimmy Page says, so-and-so influenced me. Well, who, who, you know, so, of course, there, it was blues-driven first. It, it was blues-driven where they had to, they had to, uh, they were buying the 40, they were getting the 45s, the old 45 vinyl records sent to them, as well as the Beatles and the, that Southern Louisiana, Louisiana, uh, in, in, in the bayou and all that. And they had a lot of uh, black Afro, Afro American artists that were playing certain bluesy stuff and everything. And uh, uh, Jimmy Page, what might have been getting those 45s and because they 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 put this blues into the who can put blues good blues feelings into just the most bashing bam 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 i could go on for three hours here uh man tony james mccarthy thank you uh yeah the yardbirds yeah yeah, and I'm glad I was around because I don't even know what kind of stuff there is now. I don't know. Everything's a little different as far as entertainment and what, you know. I'm glad I got to uh, experience as a teenager uh, these groups on the radio and everything, you know. And even up to grunge, even up to grunge. And then that was it. Then... A total eclipse of the sun, just like the other day. Then boom. At least we caught it before the before the end. So uh yeah, I appreciate you guys coming in here. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, we could talk about music. Forget the mobsters. We talk about music. Forget them. They're bull crap. All that stuff. So uh I saw the clash, the who I saw a lot of uh groups. I saw Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> Sticks. All rock. Hey, if it sounds good to me. I like soul music. I like the stylistics. I like all a lot, all, a lot of that soul music. 
If it sounds good, it's good. Let barely. Holland Wolf. Wow. Who brung up Lead Belly and Howlin' Wolf? I actually think, I actually think Kurt Cobain actually brung them up in an interview as well as Jimmy Page and I think Jimmy Page was um, doing an interview, and they were and they were asking about, oh, this would happen. Thank you, Tony. Uh, 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 thank you, uh, James McCarthy. They're asking Jimmy Page about a song, and it went ding 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 whatever. Okay, forgive me. And then he said. Jimmy Page said, check out, I think it was Howlin' Wolf, or he said, now check out the riffs from this blues song, from this blues song. And there was only a couple chords like that were different, but he almost stole that riff. <laughs> I mean, the guy, the guy created a lot of his stuff, but he had this whole pool of music from all these blues and consciously or subconsciously, he can take that stuff out in the studio and say, this sounds good, Robert and, and John and J John Paul Jones. This sounds good. So he had this whole bank of knowledge from all that, all that stuff. And it just came out like, you know, you need grooving, you know, a whole lot of love. Well, that might have been generated, Mr. McCarthy, from out, you know, uh, uh, this Bayou thing or whatever with Holland Wolf, where the chords almost sounded the same, but like like different. But this, he had it in his mind. He 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 had it in his mind. Willie Dixon. I think this James McCarthy's a musician. You you this guy's a musician. You can't fool me anymore. This guy's a musician. Yeah, so ain't that something that Ace Generation got influenced because uh, Willie Dixon Sony. So when, now, who did the blues? Yep, Willie Dixon song. Wow, okay, you know, you know where that came from. I, I knew that might have been, yeah. So... The blues singers, what were their influencers? <laughs> How far back do you go to just the fife and drum? You know. Wow. Ain't that something? Oh, nearly note for note, James. Wow. Jeez. Ain't that something? Note for note. Um, and I think there was uh, that one uh, lady got the love I need, maybe. Uh, oh, darling, 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 walk a while with me. You got so much, uh, many years of word that only ba -ba -ba. I think there was some riff structure now i'm not going to talk like a, a music producer but there was some structural stuff in that song well they, they he had all these things uh um they all listened to these guys so that, that that was their bank of knowledge that the blues boys were getting down with those chords back then he could play it uh Electric or, or not ele uh, electric or acoustic. Wow, yeah. But they were showing some of the songs, some of the riffs that were, uh, but of course they did their own creations. But, but is it like, are all the riffs already taken in the year 2024? You know, like, is, is every good sounding riff been played on because it, it, it already absorbed into your essence it, it already absorbed into your mind and it already absorbed into you 
So you could be in the studio not even realizing something, and you could just say, hey, Jimmy, uh, or Jimmy could say, how about this, or stuff like that. But they could take those grassroots foundation chords from them older guys and then put some put some nice juice on it too. You know, they could get a basic uh, uh, chord line, whatever. I'm not a musician. They could get a basic structure and say, "Whoa, you know." Then Jimmy Page would says, "Well, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna manipulate it like this." And so, I think in the early days that influence was on them much more in the studio that because all the all those uh, other performers were still fresh in their mind. So of course it, it would be represented more in that early uh, uh, library of music. And then as they got better and better in their craft, then they, then they could still integrate that and or uh, use some of their new creative talents, which there were many. So very interesting. Thank you, James McCarthy. Thank you. Wow, I love I love that stuff. Yeah. No, Dread Zeppelin, the Elvis sings up. You need fooling, baby, I'm not fooling. Way, way down inside, honey, you need I. Elvis could play some Zeppelin. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. A whoop, a whoop. Blue Zeppelin. Wow. Dread Zeppelin. They met. They met Elvis. Elvis Mill. Elvis Mill, Robert Platt. Can you imagine? Two of them. What do they talk about? I'm better than you, Elvis. No, I'm Robert Plant. I'm Led Zeppelin. I'm the king of the music. No, I am. Oh, you are. Wow, I was just informed that O.J. Simpson died. Hmm. Well, God rest his soul. You get it all here, folks. Breaking news and everything else. Well, my team of production, my production team here keeps me Data. So, um, wow. I enjoyed this show. It's just fun to talk about this stuff. Uh, I, I, I like that. So, um, uh, thank you everybody for coming in. Uh, yeah, uh, fun show, fun show. We could chop things up and everything. Thank you once again. Uh, James McCarthy. God bless you. I appreciate that. Come in here. You don't have to send money all the time. Just come in here and talk to me, okay? That's all. Yeah, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. We're going there, man. You couldn't believe. We're all going to go together. We're all going to ride together. We're just all going to ride together, okay? That's how we're going to do it. And James, just come in and talk to me. I know you do the financial thing, but just come in and hang out. I, it was nice to finally, you know, try to get to know you a little better, you know. So that's cool, too. Um, yeah, thank you, Tony. Have a good day. James, of course, thank you for I, I, uh, your intimate knowledge of music. I like that. I know you a little better now. Thank you. You know, uh, Lady Saint, thank you once again. Lady Saint 44, thank you. Wyatt Earp, yeah, you'll be 100. Marta Fowler, thank you. Thank you. Craven, all right, Craven. Jefferson Airplane, I know. Yeah, yeah. very underrated, Jefferson Airplane. Big J Biz, all right, man. I really appreciate that. You know, I appreciate numbers and subscribers, but I appreciate community and that kind of stuff. I appreciate that, in case you haven't noticed. I appreciate uh, that, you know. Arian Bross, man, you, you ain't getting away. You are not getting away. Lady Saint 44. Uh, and I'm not going to dye my hair, Lady Saint. Shoeshine black, maybe. 
Thank you, man. And thank you once again, James McCarthy. But that's fine. Just come in and talk to me. I like I like that. Just talk. That's all you got to do. You ain't got to pay. Just talk to me. Michael Candinas. Thank you. And that Mr. Avinash and Francis. Beautiful Italian woman. Sorry, Francis. Sorry. Sorry, but damn. Francis, sorry, but damn. <sighs> Behave, Joe. Behave. So that's it, folks. Uh, you know, uh, buy stocks. You just come in. Good to see it. Check out the video. We talked about a lot of stuff in this video. I, I enjoyed this video because we, we talked about music on top of uh, uh, you never know what you're going to get here. Uh, it's good interaction about musicians, music, songs, and everything else, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. You know, it's a talk show. It's a talk show. You, you jump on the train. You don't you don't know where you might end up. So uh, thank you. Buy stocks. Uh, I appreciate everybody's support and everything. Uh, thank you, uh, James McCarthy. God bless you, pal. Uh, man, yeah, just come in and, and talk. I mean, you've been, you've been real good. I don't want you to feel like you got to do that all the time. You know, you know what I mean? So I, I like your knowledge on this stuff and too, I like, yeah, it's good knowledge, man. I mean, I guess I, thank you folks. So, uh, that's that the start of this video was a bash, you know, what that's, that's all. Gotta go. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Gonna get a punching bag with Mike Francis's face on it and just wear it out. Maybe I'll get in shape. You know, if there was just a punching bag that just was a regular, regular punching bag and it was hanging in my room, I probably wouldn't even look at it. But if that punching bag had Mike Francis's face on it, I'd be like this. Me, I'd be bulked up in a month. Well, Joe, how did you get so in shape and how'd you build up all those muscles? Well, I got a punching bag with Mike Francis's face on it. So I smashed it freaking 16 hours a day. Forgive me, folks. God bless Mike Francis and his family. And, you know, thank you, Tony Lucas. Uh, I appreciate all your support. God bless you and your family. Raise up. Let's all rise up. Man, we're... Life is short. Some of you are younger than others, but man, let's have the fun while we can have the fun. Okay. So, uh, thank you. Continue to be the kings and queens of your world and don't give up. The world is a vampire. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Put your, put your protection up because the world wants that blood. So we're going to rise up. We're going to have fun. We're going to hang out. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So uh, this old man needs some orange juice and uh, a nap. You hit 60. But look, at I did good. I didn't even take a puff off of the other one. So mm. thank you, folks. Tune in again and uh, stay great. Let the world bless you. Let the universe uh, bless you. Me too, Lady Saint. Thank you, and uh, come back and hang out with me, and we could uh, throw some things around. It's your show, too, because I just bounce off for of you guys. Thank you, James. Thank you. So uh, this is your show as well. <coughs> this is mine. <coughs> Thank you, and we'll do it again. I hate to say goodbye all the time. I hate to say goodbye. I'll see you, folks. <coughs>